Hello and welcome to Countdown. I'm David Greenberg along with Scott Lever. We're, jo we're glad you could join us as we count down to the fifth weekend of high school football. Week five of six, but COVID continues to cause issues. Oregon's team went into quarantine this week, so the Hawks will not take the field. North Boone won't either. The Vikings played Oregon last week, and because of contact tracing, many of North Boone's players are now in quarantine. So every time our local players take the field, they need to save her because you just never know if it'll be the last time they take the field. These positive COVID tests can pop up really at any time. One Nick 10 team is back from COVID protocols. That's the Auburn Knights. They sat out the last two weeks. The Knights will play at Belvedere North Friday night. That's one of four Friday night games in the Nick 10. Belvedere will play Jefferson at Wyeth Stadium. Guilford play, will play at Hananiga. And Freeport will take on East at Swanson Stadium. We need to talk about the ERABs for just a second. They're on a three game winning streak. They've outscored those last three opponents 168 to 13. Last Friday, they set a Nick 10 record for the most points scored by a team when they beat Jefferson 86 to 6. Some people see that score and automatically assume that the ERABs ran it up on the Jayhawks. That wasn't the case. The ERABs substituted in their backups. And those backups just kept on rolling. The Jayhawks have had a lot of issues on defense this season, and the fact that they sat out the previous week because their game against Auburn got canceled didn't help. And now East will play Freeport for the Division B Championship in the Nick 10 Friday night. Both teams are three and one. The other big, big game this weekend in the Nick 10 will take place on Saturday. Boylan will play at Harlem. Both teams are undefeated. The Huskies passed a major test last Saturday when they defeated Hananiga in the rain, 26-24. The Huskies rallied from a 17-0 deficit. They also trailed 24-14. James Cooper Jr. became the Nick Ten's all-time leader in career passing yardage, but that didn't. But that record didn't mean nearly as much to him as the victory did. We're all excited. Motion's all over the place. First time this group of seniors has a B Hano, so. Really exciting. I don't believe Harlem's ever gone nine and zero or six and zero. So this is their legacy. I mean, they they could be the first team to try to go to undefeated, and and that was the goal from the beginning of the uh, when we found out we were able to play, and that's still our goal. Boylan sat out last week. Its game against Auburn was canceled due to COVID. So the Titans are rested and eager to get back at it this week. But they won't have running back Xavier Bryant. He is done for the rest of the season with a knee injury. Obviously, getting our bodies rested is helpful always and being a regroup. Um, and then there's the other side of it. I don't, say, I don't think we lost any momentum. I think we're all uh, mentally tough enough to, to be able to take that. You know, anytime you get a bye week, there, there's, there, there's blessings to it. And there's also what you're talking about, a little bit of a curse. To, uh, you lose a little momentum and a little steam. Uh, but because we're getting ready for Harlem on the other side of it, uh, we were not at a loss of excitement uh, or steam. You guys in Harlem have had real tight games the last three years. What do these games usually come down to? Uh, I will, I'll say execution. Um, they, they, it's been marked on their calendar. It's always marked on our calendar as well. Um, you know, the, the, the three things that are, we always talk to the kids about in terms of importance is offensive and defensive execution, the turnovers and the penalties. So no matter who the game is, I think it's going to come down to those three components. And of those three, can't, man, can't turn the ball over. We can't be sloppy with penalties. And we've got to execute perfect if we're going to beat a team like Harlem. Xavier, I mean, he's a heck of a talent. And he does help you have some of that Absolutely. balance because he Absolutely. can do so many things. Uh, how much is he going to be missed? Oh, uh, well, I think you saw it in the second half of the Harlem game. Uh, just mentally, our kids, first of all, just having to adjust and adapt with life without him. These kids have played with him since they were in third and fourth grade, so that, that, that's never an easy thing. Uh, but we talk to our kids about adversity all the time. It, 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 it surrounds us. How are we going to adapt? And so we don't know yet. We're going we're to go out there and we're going to find out. Xavier Bryant will be missed by Boylan. Now, these two teams have had some tight games the past three years. As I said, in 2019, Boylan won 20 to 13. In 2018, the Titans won 24-21. In 2017, Harlem won 21-17. That was James Cooper Jr.'s freshman year. He didn't play that day because of a wrist injury. The last two years against Boylan, he has thrown five total touchdown passes, and he's been sacked seven times. So sack will be a key stat, I think, Saturday. Can the Titans get pressure on Cooper, or can Harlem's line and scheme give Cooper time to operate? He wasn't sacked once last week against Tonaniga. To bring you up to speed on the Nick 10 standings, Division A looks like this. Harlem's 4-0, Boylan 3-0, so the winner of their game Saturday wins the division. Guilford is third at 2-2, then it's Jefferson at 0-3, and Belvedere at 0-4. 
In Division B, East and Freeport are tied for first at 3-1. and one. Again, they play Friday night. Guilford is third at 2-2. Two two. Then comes Jefferson at 0-3 and, and Belvedere at 0-4. Here's the schedule this week in the Big Northern Conference. Byron will play Winnebago at Harlem on Friday. Dixon will play at Mendota Friday. Lutheran travels to Genoa Kingston Friday. And Stillman Valley will play at Rock Falls Saturday afternoon. Again, Oregon and North Boone will sit out this week following COVID protocols. In the NUIC, these are the games that will be played on Friday. Stockton and East Dubuque, Galena at Lena Winslow. Lee Wynn, which sat out last week because his game against Dakota was canceled. So uh, Lee Wynn eager to play against Galena. You know they're ready to go. Amboy will play at Milledgeville, and Orangeville plays a non-conference game against Knoxville. Saturday, there will be three games. EPC at Dupec, Rockford Christian at West Carroll, and Aquin at Forest. And that last game shaping up to be a good one. Aquin is undefeated, and Forreston is looking more and more like Forreston. That is, they are starting to dominate it again. The Cardinals lost their opener to Milledgeville in overtime. Then two weeks ago, they bounced back with a big win at Amboy. And last week, the Cardinals really put it together in a 48-23 win at Rockford Christian. The Cardinals led 40-8 at halftime. Jordan Neuschwander rushed for 234 yards and two touchdowns. He also hauled in a touchdown pass. I spoke with Neuschwander after the game. Jordan, congrats, great win for you guys. Um, you got off to the slow start because of COVID. You lost a week, you lost some valuable prep time. Does it feel like now you guys are finally kind of hitting your stride and getting to where you need to be? Uh, yeah, I feel like in the first game we were like a little rough and everybody had a game on us. But once we got going on like uh, Milge, uh, Amboy and then now this game, I feel like the ball is just rolling and I feel like the, we should keep that rolling into next week. I said to myself coming into this year, this this is going to be a breakout year for Jordan Neuschwander because you've got that kind of ability. Were you kind of expecting the same thing from yourself this year? Uh, actually, I didn't. I didn't really uh, think that I would break out like this. Uh, I could just only give credit to my offensive line and uh, our coaches for uh, prepping us for every week for a new opponent. So, yeah. You guys got the ball back right before halftime with just a few seconds on the clock. You ripped off a long run play. Then they throw the long pass to you and you guys connect on it. Uh, just tell me about that touchdown pass. And because I knew they were going to somehow, some way get the ball into your hands. So. Uh, yeah, well, we ran, uh, we ran one of our plays and uh, at the final second and uh, my quarterback said, I'm just going to chuck it up to you. So I said, OK, I'll go up and get it. And then once I caught it, I didn't think I was actually in the end zone until I looked over at the ref and he put his hands up. I'm like, OK, let's go. <laughs> Do you ever go to Coach Zick or to your quarterback and say, hey, I think I can get open on this play or this route. Do you ever do that? Uh, yeah, I feel like since like the holes are kind of small, uh, but I can still uh, squeeze through them once I see a hole. But if I get like tackled before I hit there, I'm like, let's run that again. I know I can get it. I can uh, break that. I'm excited about next week. You guys get Aquin at home. That's going to be a heck of a game. Are you how, how excited are you to be able to go up against a great team like the Bulldogs? <laughs> I'm so excited to play them finally again uh, after uh, last year after we lost to them. I feel like we shouldn't have, but this year is our redemption to get back at them. A couple weeks, we change seasons to track and field. We're going to see you back on the track, uh, blazing away at the 100 and 200 and being the fastest man in the conference. Is that a goal? Is that your goal again? Uh, yeah, to be in all conference and be, I want to be the fastest man in the NUIC this year. So, Well, yeah. my money's definitely on you. Great job. Congrats. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. <laughs> That Aquin Forreston game is going to be a great game. Yeah, there will be some playmakers on the field in that one. That's under the lights in Forreston Saturday night. Here's some more games that will be played around the area this weekend. Rochelle at Sycamore, Nuqua Valley at DeKalb, Woodstock at Marengo, Polo River Ridge, and South Beloit at Alden Hebron. It's time to take a look back at some of our week four stat stuffers. He's East running back C.J. Berry. Rushed for 237 yards and three touchdowns in a win over Jefferson. North Boone receiver Will Dutch had two touchdown receptions and he returned a punt for a touchdown. Tyrone Brakes of Belvedere North rushed for 151 yards and four touchdowns. Harlem quarterback James Cooper Jr. passed for 353 yards and accounted for four total touchdowns passing and rushing. And Harlem receiver Dominic McCarron holding 14 passes for 162 yards and two touchdowns. 
But our week four MVP is Dupec Jr. quarterback Hunter Hoffman in a win at Orangeville last Saturday. He passed for 356 yards and seven, yes, seven touchdowns. And just for a little icing on the cake, he also rushed for 70 yards. Hunter Hoffman is our countdown MVP for week four. Now let's count down our top five plays from last weekend. Number five, Rockford Christian quarterback Caden Norquist likes to air it out. He got a lot of air under that one and into the winning arms of Isaiah Johnson for six. That came against Forreston. Top play number four. How about some defense? Lutheran cornerback Evan Weevil. Watch him come up and take out Dixon quarterback Jacob Gaither. That's putting your body out there for the team. A great tackle by Weevil. Top play number three, Harlem's James Cooper Jr. making the short pass to Desian Jordan. And then Desian Jordan lets his speed take over. He can motor. Top play number two is from the same Harlem Hananiga game. Only this time, it's Hananiga that makes the big play. Braden Sales picks off Cooper, and he is off to the races. He goes 85 yards for the Hananiga touchdown. Sales is an excellent two-way player. And our number one play this week on Countdown, East running back C.J. Berry. I think C.J. stands for could just, as in could just go all the way, because that's what Berry does a lot. He left the Jefferson Jayhawks in his rearview mirror. The most impressive part was the beginning when he spun off a tackle there and never lost his balance for a second. C.J. Berry, an electrifying ERAB, makes our Countdown top play of the week. More great plays are in store for us this weekend, but will the weather be great? Here's Candace King with our football forecast. I'm Chief Meteorologist Candace King with your football forecast for both Friday and Saturday. Friday going to be a dry day, but as the sun does set, it is going to be a little on the chillier side. Kickoff temperatures with a light northeasterly wind in the mid uh, 50s for us, but those numbers will drop off quickly. Cloud cover expected to increase Friday night. Now Saturday could be a little different story. Still a light wind from the northeast, but we see a bit more cloud cover Saturday morning. We've got the clouds by Saturday afternoon. Slight chance that there could be a few light rain showers. It will be cool with that temperature staying in the mid 50s. That's been your football forecast. All right, Candace, thanks so much. We'll have week five action covered for you on overtime Friday night. Highlights, interviews, feature stories, and more. That's on Fox 39 live at 11 p.m. This is Countdown. Watch for it each week on our website, mystateline.com, on our WTBO YouTube page, and on social media as we count down to each weekend of action. We'll see you Friday.